Welcome, fellow Toastmasters. Yay. You know, I was just waiting for the applause. Because we know why we clap, right? Why do we clap? Energy. energy. Thank you, thank you, energy. Well, tonight I know all of you are going to provide a tremendous amount of energy. We're so thrilled and excited that all of you could join us this evening. We always look forward to top to our holiday party. This is our ninth holiday party. Yay! Yay. Yay. And next year, we hope that you all will join us. We'll talk a little later on, but next June, we will celebrate our 10th anniversary as an advanced Toastmasters club. So. Just one housekeeping duty before we begin, and I'll tell you what the rules of the of the meeting are this, this evening. If you have this device, if you would please put it on silent, but I would encourage you heavily to tweet. To tweet. If you want to tweet, if you want to let everybody know what a great time that you're having. I don't know if you can in the classroom. Well, we can try. Some of them have been blocked. We can try. Yeah, does everyone have a ticket? Yes. Yeah. So, Gita, you're in front of the line, I need a ticket? Okay. You need a ticket, sweetheart? Yes, it's fine. Okay, Joanne will take care of you with the, with the tickets. So, everybody, once you have a ticket, here's what we're going to do with the tickets. A little bit later on, when we have the White Elephant gift exchange, we're going to call a number, and you'll come up as we call your number, one, two, three, etc. Then you'll come up, and you can pick from any of the gifts on the table. We are going to limit steals to two. Because a number of years ago, we had one white elephant gift. I think it exchanged hands six times. <laughs> and no one knew what it was. Does anyone know what a squatty potty is? Yes. So we didn't know what it was. So this person that got it, she was holding it, looking at it, trying to figure out what it was. And we're all sitting there two trying to figure out what is this thing and then somebody googled it and then we discovered that it was a squatty potty so that was an interesting white elephant gift but at this point in time I'm going to call up our president for opening remarks and some comments and then we will get this party started I have to tell you we're the only Toastmasters club and Roger's is going to pull it up in a moment we're the only Toastmasters club that has a fireplace do you see it it's virtual it's virtual. <laughs> so Roger will put it up in a minute. And he always says, well, Jerry, I think that's your fireplace. I can only wish once you see it, they were my fireplace. So please let me welcome our president, Valerie Fusan. attract some new members if we had it like this all the time? Oh, yeah. I think so, right? I think so. Before Roger puts up, Roger, would you put the fireplace on so we can have a little warmth in here? Yes. Turn off the music. So, but before, so when Roger's doing that, we have a guest celebrity here this evening, and Kim Barrett was so nice to bring him, so he is going to serenade us with a little short song, okay? So here we go. Let's see, 
Okay, Boosie, that's a no. Everyone has an agenda. Awesome, okay. As Val said, three parts of the meeting this evening. We're going to begin with holiday table topics. And everybody is strongly encouraged to participate. I guarantee you that Joanne will make the questions really hard. Not, we'll have a lot of fun with this. And so we encourage our guests also, if you'd like to join in, please do so. We encourage you, you'll have a lot of fun easy questions to answer. So please help me welcome up our holiday topic session this evening, Miss Joanne Pelly. Welcome everyone, Master Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and wonderful, fantastic guests. First time here, you're going to have it. We need to have that music shut off, please. Could we have the music shut off? Our media master will take care of it. Media master will take care of it. So here's what topic, topic, uh, talk, topic, table topics are all about. So I'll give you a teeny weeny sample. Uh, you have one to two minutes and no longer. Uh, you're gonna have to record for us the timer. Mm -hmm. Timer. Uh, my story is at Christmas time. I always sing my grandkids two songs, and you don't get to hear it this time. But if you come next time for to Toastmasters on Purpose, I'll be singing them. So oh, that's a short one, maybe 15 seconds. So who would like to come up? There are four questions, so that's four of you. Who's brave enough? There he is, right back there. Larry, four okay. We used to do a grandparent, and my son would always put obscure, weird things <laughs> on his list because he felt he didn't need anything, so he would put things down that nobody would ever get him. One year, I got him, and he asked for dinosaur bones. He asked for a couple of other things, but the best gift was the dinosaur bones. I found a place online in, in Arizona where they dig dinosaur bones. I called out there and I asked the guy, hey, you know, I need a dinosaur bone to give to somebody for Christmas as a gag gift. He said, well, he says, how big do you want it? I says, it doesn't matter. So he, he sent me, for the price of shipping, he sent me some dinosaur bones that were small fossils and I gave them to my son, along with the other things he asked for as well, which I'm probably not going to talk about. But that's okay, because he got all the things that he asked on his list and he never asked for weird things again. <laughs> Dinosaur bones. All right. A second volunteer. Come on, be brave. Okay. All right. Peter. Guess. We're going back about probably back to my second grade when we first we went home to we went to we went on vacation for Christmas, but before that we got to do it to do the through the tree and that year our tree was a little too big for the for, 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 the, for the house so we ended up having to, to very much trim it down about we had, we had to trim out. out <coughs> Half, half a foot of it, and we ended up having to uh, 
because it ended up scraping the ceiling bad enough to where she put a post and poked a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> so we, we, had to, we had to get that fixed up, and then uh, we were blowing up with the ornaments, ornaments we used to, we usually do, and uh, ended up tipping over. <laughs> and uh, we, we ended up fixing it, and we ended up going on to that vacation that year. And thank you for, for bringing me up here, and uh, it was great to come up here. Jesse. Are you ready, Jesse? Yes. All right. If you could go someplace very different for the holidays, where would you go and who would you take with you? Fellow Toastmaster. Now, I put this on my Christmas wish list. I can go anywhere I want to and bring whoever I want to bring to. That's great. I think I'm going to bring a guy, of course. <laughs> um, hopefully, he got a lot of things present. And uh, I don't know the name on the, bo the boxes. But we will travel on Christmas Eve. Maybe around the world, if it's possible. And this guy, I keep thinking about the image of my husband right now. <laughs> One time he has, uh, he didn't shave after surgery for three months. So he's a Caucasian, of course. And his beard grow pretty substantial. And he walked to Walmart in August. And there was one little three-year-old kid come over and goes, Mommy, Mommy, there's Santa. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to travel with Santa on Christmas Eve and travel around the world. <laughs> and I think this Santa has to trust me because I'm the woman. I never get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Table topic, who's brave? I hear cheers back there. Arthur, okay. All right. Arthur, the most special thing about the holiday is, the most special thing about the holiday is, Meeting fellow Toastmasters and guests. I think we can all agree that the most special thing about holidays is family. Oftentimes we may not realize how valuable family is until we yet we have to spend a holiday without family when it's not by choice. Over Christmas and the year of 2012 coming up to 2013. I was in, a, in an unfortunate situation where I could not spend holidays with my family and it wasn't my, my choice. For that reason, I would say that the most valuable thing I made a promise to myself that I would never spend holidays without my family. I would say that spending the holidays with your family is the most special gift of all. Okay. 
Yeah, that's a typical story, right? The typical story is you're a little kid, you go to your aunt and uncle's house, you have dinner, and when you're one of the littlest kids, Santa always shows up later on, right? He shows up for a little bit in a red suit. He's very scary. When you're a little kid, he's this big guy with this hat, big beard, you can barely see his face. He's the guy who usually shows up. But maybe there's somebody else. <laughs> Boat or, hmm, let's see, I'm trying to think of uh, a super special Christmas Eve. It's also really nice, we heard another speech about family, but it's really nice when your grandfather is there, right? When your grandpa's there and you can climb into his lap and he gives you a big hug. My grandpa used to sell cigarettes and cigars. I know it's like taboo now, but he always smelled like tobacco leaves, and so that's what I remember, and always smelled so good to me. So maybe that's my man, right? You know, my dad's with me all the time, but my grandpa wasn't here. He lived in Florida. I hardly ever got to see him. After my grandma passed away, then my grandpa came up, or my grandpa came up one year for Christmas, so I went up to say it would be him. Okay. Absolutely best Christmas. 
with a woman that you were so entranced over. You <laughs> heard your story about a woman that you spent Christmas with. You were so entranced over. That would have to be my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was a district governor a number of years ago, and I appointed her in a, as an area governor. And out of all the people I appointed, she was the only person I didn't actually know. But the first person for her area referred me to her. So it did work out. I gave her extra credit, and she became my area governor. <laughs> we want um, details. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> extra credit. So, because I was a district governor, and we were dating at a time, then she says, can we go on a date where there aren't any Toastmasters? <laughs> <laughs> so, I did that. Uh, there was a play. George Theater, so I picked her up, we had dinner, we went to see the play, and found out that she was into plays. And I also found out that her father-in-law owned a, a home on a, on a lake in uh, northern Illinois, and he liked to fish. <laughs> so actually I liked I fell in love with my in-laws before I fell in love with my <laughs> That was a time, I says that, and there were no Toastmasters. Maybe there might have been, but I didn't know them, and nobody came up to me and said anything, so it was a good evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, as your holiday Toastmaster, I got ahead of myself. So before we continue, I'd like to introduce some of our VIPs who have joined us for this holiday celebration this evening, because for some of our guests, I'm sure you don't know who these folks are, so let me introduce them. First of all, our district director, Ms. Stella Lawrence. And the young lady sitting over to her right, just on the other side of Brian, is Belinda Fulton. She is our club growth director. <laughs> Diane corrected me. <laughs> Left, my right. How do I right? I'm stage challenged. What can I tell you? We can tell. You're never up there. <laughs> I'm never up there. Ever, ever. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some of our division directors please stand up and let them know what area you're with. So I'll start with you, Ma. If you would please stand and let them know. Promoted. Area director. Area director, yes. Area so, director. area director, C15. Heyman Singh. What division? Division C-15. Okay. All right. <laughs> Diva. All right. Okay. Who, do we have, who else do we have in our midst that's an area director or I'm looking around? Yay. Monica. Yay. Yes. Area 4. Area 4, Division A, Monica Leitner. Yes. Okay. So Val reminded me, because we have a lot of guests this evening, of course we have a lot of Toastmasters, I'd like you to turn to the person on your either left or right, it doesn't matter, okay? Introduce yourself to a person that you've never met before. Just take a minute or so to do that. Thank you. 
What's your name? Huh? What's your name? Tim. Tim. Good to see you, Tim. without being kind of nudged, have you turned to the fellow Toastmaster person next to you and just introduced yourself? Be honest. Always. Always? Always. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Sometimes we have to prompt folks just to turn to their fellow Toastmaster and just introduce themselves. I always find that kind of interesting because we're all family here. And I really mean that sincerely. We're all family because we're part of this family across the globe of almost 360,000 members. So every time we have a chance to come together to fellowship together, you know, we learn about each other, we hear different stories, which we're about to hear now. And I really think it's a special organization because where, where else can we go to where you have literally a league of nations, all ethnicities, all nationalities, from all walks of life, male, female. And guys, just so you know, the majority of membership is female. <laughs> just, just saying, if you didn't know that before tonight, okay? We're gonna move into the next portion of the meeting. At our annual holiday party, we always have folks, it's voluntary. If you'd like to come up for just two to three minutes and share a holiday memory or a holiday story, just to snip at something that's special to you or something that you remember as a child, teenager, you know, when you're in college or a young adult, and just share that with us for two to three minutes. So like I said, either when you're a child, teenage, young adult, or mature adults, as some of us are. So who would like to share a holiday memory? I'll go first, Jerry. Okay, Tim, come on up. All right. so well because that was the year when I enlisted into the United States Navy and I by Christmas time got the surprise <coughs> of my life I was stationed aboard a brand new ship called the USS Bunker Hill I did my boot camp I did what they call their personnel day school but what really struck me was that I was going to be at Christmas on station at the Bunker Hill but I had a chance to get home for Thanksgiving with my grandmother, grandfather, and family. I was in Meridian, Mississippi, Wednesday afternoon, 3 o'clock, I left the base. I returned with the TV that I had rented for the last six weeks to the rental agency, and by 4 o'clock, I was on my way home, 700 miles straight through to my grandmother's house at 9 a.m. in the morning, I then sat there and said to her, Grandma, look who's here for Thanksgiving. We thought you weren't coming, but glad you could make it. The drive for family. One of my best holiday memories. Who else would like to share a holiday memory? Brian. Everyone always has that one uncle that is full of surprises. For me, 
That is my Uncle Dan. <coughs> For Christmas Eve, our family always has a party, and his wife always makes chocolate candies for everyone. Now, just giving those out to people, that doesn't sound like it would be that fun. So he always had a clever way of handing them out, where he would dress up as different characters, and he would give all of us family members a hard time when he was giving the candy out in a show that he put on for everyone. He would, and some of these characters that would show up would be the least one likely ones you would expect. Santa, well, he never came. But one year, the Christmas bunny came. He <laughs> was handing out the candy. The other most memorable one was when he came to the door and knocked and was Mr. M. Bezler, and he was coming up with the clever ways to hand the candy out that year. And he sometimes has other people come in and play characters in his shows as well. One of them was, I have a cousin whose name is Colin. In this one, his last name was Oscopy. <laughs> and puns to make giving out the candy fun, and it always gives the family a laugh. So I think uh, one of my favorite memories from Christmas are some of these various shows that he put on, and how he made just giving a simple gift out the entertaining show. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Who else would like to share a holiday memory? Jacob, come on up. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, <laughs> uh, what do I remember? I remember as a little kid, probably second, third grade, all the time. My parents, they, they would go out to errands, and I have three brothers and a sister. And all the time, we'd, we'd be looking for our Christmas presents. Search it everywhere, this and this and this, you know, up the cupboards, down below, everything. And then, at that year I wanted uh, cowboy boots. Really, it's just like second grade, I wanted cowboy boots. And I'm looking around, I found this box. Look like, look, shake it. I'm like, hmm, what's in there? I know it's for me. And then, shake it again. Go cricket. Cricket. Ribbit, 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 cricket. No, I'm kidding about that part. Anyway, <laughs> I punched through the bottle, and it was by uh, Cowboy Boots. And, uh, and then I had to rewrap it, put tape on it, <laughs> and a job of tape. And that's uh, Christmas time. My, my mom's like, oh, sweet Jacob, it's from someone. And I'm like, oh, what's this? Shake it, cricket, cricket. Okay. Uh, open up some cowboy boots. Thank you. I got cowboy boots. <laughs> That's the end of the story. <laughs> Suppose Jacob, that be that could be construed as a dramatic box. <laughs> just, just one. Who else would like to share? Brian, come on up. All right. thing with the, anytime we got a present, no what it was, I guess a little kid, get a toy, and it's like, all right, and he'd always uh, be like, oh, that's, well, I'm going to take that away, I'm going to take this home, and he'd have you so convinced that, you know, it's like, it's like oh, I get so upset, but it was, uh, I don't know, it's, as, at the moment, I was, you know, he'd get us all riled up with that, but I always remember leaving at the end of it, you know, it just kind of left with, like, warm spot on the so so there's all the, that fun on it. It's um, all those just those little different things like that. Remember throughout the times you get that just kind of little special moment. And um, <clears throat> one other thing I had was uh, it was the first time I was actually without being with my family on Christmas, but it was okay because it was. Um, I had a friend of mine moved up to Wisconsin, and his company um, had tickets, so I was tickets to the games. It was uh, 
Christmas Day Bears Packers game. And I got, he had an extra ticket for us. I was able to go. And it was, uh, and Monica's still mad at me for that because she's the one who got me into football. <laughs> and she didn't get to go. Um, and the, we, they had boxes up there, but since he was from Chicago and a Bears fan, we weren't allowed to sit in the box where they get the seats. But it was, uh, it was, I was struck by how welcoming the Green Bay fans were. The people that were just really good vibe all around. And it was just such an enjoyable time, especially because we won that year. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was, yeah, just, I think those are two things that kind of stand out. of meeting my mother. She was one of the kindest, most sociable people I've ever met, and so un totally unlike me. She was very quiet. She was soft-spoken and exceedingly kind. And one Christmas, as we were getting ready for final preparations, my family, my growing up family, always celebrated on Christmas Eve because as my eldest brother got married, Christmas Day would be for the in-laws. So the night before Christmas Eve day, my mother said, honey, would you let me to the airport in the morning? You're going to go to the airport Christmas Eve morning? Mm -hmm. Now at the time, Mom worked for United Airlines. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh yes, I need to do a quick trip. And I need to catch this 5.55 a.m. flight to New York. Mom, everybody's coming over. Tomorrow night is Christmas Eve. Oh yeah, I'll be back by noon. <laughs> okay, sure I'll take you. Dad can't, he has to put together some of the kids' toys. Okay, so here I am at 4 a.m. driving my mother to O'Hare. Finally I said, Mom, what are you going for? <coughs> she said, Hans is stuck in New York. I want to take him his Christmas present. Who's Hans? <laughs> the summer before, my parents had traveled to Germany. And they were stuck there because, as employees, they were traveling space available. And they were stuck in the Frankfurt airport for close to 12 hours. And Hans was the ticket agent who made sure that they got food and made sure that he tried to get them on flights. And he had come to this country and was stuck. He couldn't get home. So you're taking him his Christmas present. She goes, oh yes, it's all packed, I'm ready to go. What are you taking him? BBDs. BBDs? You're taking him underwear? When we were in Germany, he said that's what he wants when he comes to <laughs> So, you know, you can remember Christmas and your parents in a lot of different ways. But any time that underwear comes up, I think of mom. <laughs> okay, we have time for a couple more. Who else would like to share? Raj. All right. For the last 21 years, I've been making websites for people. And you know, Santa Claus is one of my best customers. I designed Santa's website. Now I met Santa at a picnic, and Santa you wouldn't believe. We all think he's a big heavy set guy with a long beard. Well, this is a frail little old man who is about 80 years old. And his beard was so old, it had yellowed and looked rotten. <laughs> but he was at a picnic, and somebody introduced me to him, and he says, I said, I'm Roger, and he said, oh, I'm, I'm Santa. I said, what? You can't be Santa, you're a little guy. And so he said, I need a website. So the website I designed was Santa in Chicago. 
and it shows where Santa is appearing everywhere. Now, as part of the arrangement with Santa, he had me come down and do a PR event. Mm -hmm. And I went into the bathroom because it was almost time, and Santa was getting his outfit on. Now, you wouldn't believe how he had to stuff himself. <laughs> he wrapped himself in pillows, of course, for the stomach, but he had to have pillows in the legs, in the shoulders, in the neck. He was puffed up like a big, giant guy. So Santa is one of my favorite clients. Check out Santa in Chicago. <laughs> I bet you all didn't know that we actually have a Santa in the district. His name is Stan Piskorski. He's Santa Stan. Santa Stan. I was originally going to have him come here this evening, but he, I think he was already booked. He was starting, starting early, you know, getting everything made, ready to start. Larry, you he's have a holiday he's story? He's actually a member of the uh, Association of Real Bearded Santas. Is he? Okay. I did not know that. Thank you. Thank you. hearing member. Okay. One more holiday story, and then I've got a holiday story to share with you all. Who would like to share a holiday story? One more. I know you all have some holiday stories you'd like to share. Rick. Okay. Rick, come on up. Come on. You, I know you got it. number two years, I was vice president of sale, and I got laid off. I was 59 years old. Going to get a job at 59 was tough. Took the first job, was bad. Second job, was there two years. Here I was in 2014, I was now 63 years old, going to turn 64 in January, and people were at a dinner across the street or neighbors. And then my wife was there, and I had left, and they said, he won't get a job. He's too old. So I had a plan, and I worked my plan. And I got offered a job two weeks before Thanksgiving. For me, the holiday season starts on Thanksgiving. And I beat two younger candidates, and I didn't tell anybody. Because I got, and at Thanksgiving dinner, I did grace. And I thank God for family friends, all the traditional stuff, and thank you for the job I'm starting on December 14th. This December 14th, I'll be there five years. I already have my five-year award, and I'll be 69 in January, and I committed to work five more years. So that's my holiday story. It was a great gift from God. Mm. The other part of the story that Rick didn't tell you is that they asked him if he would commit to 10 years. How many employers ask you, Rick, are you willing to commit to 10 years? Probably not very many, right? Mm -hmm. So when he told me that one, you know, because those of you who've been in transition, and he found, you know, because I'm in the recognition business, we always say that, you know, you go where you're recognized, where you're valued, not where you're tolerated. And so his, his company, Cummins Allison, they're a wonderful company. I've been to a lot of their meetings there, wonderful people there. So he landed in the right place, and then God did put that opportunity in front of him. So it is now 7.51. We are going to take a 10-minute break, and then 8 o'clock, well, 8.01, we're going to come back, and we're going to do the White Elephant Gift Exchange. Please help yourself to the Everybody gets to pick. What's that? I don't understand sign language. Diane, 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 Diane,
My sign language might be completely different. While you're getting settled, Jacob, Michelle, last night, probably a lot of you that are here this evening, how many of you know Dick's store? Oh yeah, where is Dick? How come he's not here? Because we had him out late last night. We, he partied heavy last night. But what I want to share, last night we had Mount Prospect celebrate their 65th anniversary. Wow. And we tied the 65th Mount Prospect Toastmaster anniversary with we always do Dick's store night every year because Dick was really instrumental in reviving or resuscitating I'm not Prospect Toastmaster. And I know none of you have ever had a struggle or challenge with your clubs, right? <laughs> sure, right. And he just, he's celebrating, he's the longest standing Toastmaster in District 30. He's celebrating 59 years. Wow. 59 years. So we were talking about all the clubs in District 30 that are older than 60 years. There are 13 clubs in District 30 that are older than 60 years. And the club that Val belongs to and Chase belongs to, and Peter Machine is back there, belong to, which is Lake Search Toastmasters. They are 79 years old. Wow. 79. They're the oldest club in the district. Wow. Yes, you're older than the district. That is correct. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, Bob. It's because of them, District 30 remained District 30. Because of LZ? Because, right, of Long Road. Okay. Whatever the longest, the oldest club is in. In a split. In the split. split. Yeah. Gets to keep the number, right? And the uh, the other guys get to get the new number. Is that true? Right. Marriage too? <laughs> <laughs> That's another conversation. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. You all have a ticket, yes? Everybody yes. has a ticket. So I'm gonna ask Joanne to come up and Val to join me. And you're gonna have because we have so many folks this evening. We're going to give you about 45 seconds maximum. Glenn's going to show you the cards. Green, that means you're, you're done. So you have to tell us before you open it what you think is in the gift. Okay? You can't rip the paper. You can shake it. You can you know, put it up to your whatever you want to do. Yes, Kim? In like 60 seconds, tell us what is in the Within 45 seconds, Within less 45 than a minute. Seconds. Yes, because we have... A lot of folks to get through, so we want to be sure to do that. Can so, we exchange so. presents with somebody if we like what they have better? Now? You can only steal twice. <laughs> twice. So yes, you can steal somebody else from gift, but you can only do that twice. Does everybody know how that works? No. no. Can you refuse? Pardon me? <laughs> can you refuse to give something up? No. No. If you, if you, if you see Larry, he gets, he, he's already opened, he is getting ready to come up and get a gift, and you already opened your gift, so instead of him picking a gift from the table, he can take your gift. Got it? So then I'm left without a gift? No. <laughs> then you get to go to the table and then you can pick somebody else's gift. Or pick somebody else's gift. Right. Okay? So Joanne, if you'd come on up. Val, if you'd please come on up. So everybody, yes. Everybody put your ticket in here. I want to make sure. Oh, in there or... We have our ticket. Your tickets no, are in the No, you have your ticket, bucket. but you have the other yeah. ticket here. Yes, Rick. Just to clarify, yes. the two fields, all right? So the first person stole it from another person. So one other person can steal it from that person, right. yeah. and you're done. Yes, yeah, you're done. Right. Object A can be taken twice. Right. Yeah, yes. yes. Or, yeah, if they have a present, then don't you hand them back your present? Can you steal that? <laughs> Can you steal back? So I steal yours, then you steal back. Because it's your turn to go. So you're like, oh, I want it back. So you take it back. No. 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 Because no. 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 then you take it back. Nice. But if yes. in the future somebody takes your new item, then it would be able to take Yeah. Right. Okay, let's get this party going here. All right. Either or. You guys can do I that. I mixed them up really good. Oh, it's me. <laughs> okay, I'm reading these numbers. The last uh, three numbers are four, nine, eight. All right. All right. Okay. This is like table topics on steroids, so you gotta go quick. Rigged, 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 rigged. 
Why don't you pull the next person yeah. so we know who's ready as soon as yeah. All right, the last three numbers are five, zero, four. All right. Five, zero, four. Brian, go ahead. All right, Brian, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, inside of here is a coffee mug. What better to start your morning than a cup of coffee in a new mug that you just got? This mug probably has a Christmas tree or some type of holiday related item on it. What better way to show your holiday spirit than to fill up with a good cup of coffee in the morning? Start that timer on your programmable coffee maker. Wake up to the coffee right as you get out of the shower. Pour it right into that cup and enjoy some coffee in the morning. Thank you. Does he open it? Yes, he opens it. Yes, 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 yes. Right. Next number will be five, one, zero. Five, one, zero. After Bob. After Bob. Everybody wants to know what's in that box. Oh, oh. 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 Five one zero. This is a bunch Maybe of you. mega lotto tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday I won four or five times. I never get picked until the last thing is there, and I'm the second person picked. So it has to be the lotto tickets. It's a tulip. It doesn't weigh as much as it's a musky. <laughs> Next number, 507. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can steal this. <laughs> Five zero seven at the end. The last three numbers. Five zero seven. Five one zero. Five one zero or five zero seven. One more. Oh, we'll go the next one. Put aside. Last three numbers. Five two five. Let's go. Five. Stealing your gift, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. So Bob gets the pick, pick again. Pick pick again. again. Yeah. Give it up, Bob. Bob, it's a hot commodity, buddy. He picks another. Thank you. He picks another. Five two nine. Who's got five two nine? This one's a little bit heavy. I wanted that one. It's a musky. No glow. It's almost. It is. Wax. Electric wax. More. <laughs> <laughs> you were so close. You were so close, Bob. Uh, 529 is over there. Use yes, 
with wax cubes <laughs> sold separately. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Let our next guy go here. Probably a uh, Christmas decoration gift. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wouldn't want to have this kind of pillow, but it's quite Just had babies.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank you so much.
obviously I lost what I had. <laughs> and well, I was so No more fruit. Here it is. Got an angel playing the violin. Seraphim. It's not done yet. No. It's not done yet. It is a Christmas tree ornament. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Right, I have a little bag. And there's a box in here of marshmallows. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Ribbit. Ribbit. Yeah. Is it cowboy boots? It's cowboy boots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do I think? I think uh, DVDs. <laughs> Ferrari. Pizza. Hot dog. Oh no! It is a. Uh, Oh my God! It is. Can you open? I love it. It's a ribbon. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> After he shows us what's in the box, it's like five one two. Five one two. Yes, I'm done. I gotta come up again, huh? Or steal something else. Well, um. Pick another one, or there's plenty of gifts on the tables, Tim. 
Yeah, but uh, he's got Don't the be bad. Who's got the holy cow? The holy cow? cow? Who's got the cow? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm going to be civilized and I'm going to go pick one. I'm going to go pick another one. <laughs> well, he's contemplating his fate. 527 is next up. 527. I wish this were a particle size fit of thorium. Oh, yeah. That's right. Why would I say that? Because it has enough power <laughs> trapped into a molten salt reactor that would power an entire city for about 30 plus years and save global warming. But since that ruby is about five years away, according to the Thorium Energy Alliance, we're going to find out what it is anyway. Thorium may have been out of the white elephant budget. An autumn leaf. Another piece of carbon capturing technology made from plastic oil which is one of the best uses of a carbon-based fossil fuel product. Make some rocks. And, uh, <laughs> shale oil is one of the best things. Here you go, Joanna. For your shale oil exploration and what that oil can become. No, I'm giving it to you as a gift. <laughs>
those headphones. Yes? Yeah. Or 
Okay, we have two we have two folks that I need to call up here. First of all, <laughs> Joanne, would you please come up, darling? Please. I had, I, had I had mentioned this to Joanne some time ago, and so I said that I would deliver on it. So this is a gift for you, my dear. Ooh. That was not a rough song, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what he's making. Short-term memories, just the very few. Elizabeth. It's a nice box, artisan's box. More rock. Yeah, <laughs> more rock. Wow. That's my most favorite dancer in the world. behind this last present. Uh, uh, I went to a Toastmaster meeting where there was a contest and uh, I won a present because Jerry was there and he brings all these presents. Uh, and it was a, a beautiful cup. And the lovely lady I was sitting next to Fanlon, she she saw the cup and she said, I want it, I want it. And I won it. And I was not fast enough, or I would have given you the cup, but I didn't. So you get to come up and have this. And it's not the same cup. something of mine and it is new and I have used it a little tiny bit so that you have the transition from me to you, my home to your home. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> had to get onto a conference call, but she said on her behalf she would like to wish all of you happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year in case you don't see her before uh, TLI, which takes place on January the 4th at the Marriott in Hoffman Estates. And so I'm going to call Val up for any closing comments or remarks, but on my behalf, thank you all for coming this evening. You've all been wonderful. Yes, Tim. Video, if there's no objections from the audience, I'd like to make the video public and make it live on Friday morning. I'll send Jerry and put a link on the website at the top, if you don't mind. Okay. So we have Val come up and close it up. Madam President.
and having, having you here as our guest. Uh, our next meeting is on January 8th, 7 p.m. 18th. December 18th. December 18th. December 18th, December 18th yes. Our next meeting is okay, so the, the 18th. It's a regular, we're going to have a regular meeting, and then on uh, Wednesday, January 8th, will be our first meeting in January. Uh, but you're welcome to come anytime and visit. We would love to have you. And again, the people that are not Toastmasters here, raise your hand. That are not Toastmasters? What? I'm an ex Toastmaster. Well, yeah, we well, you know, well, you usually you. just ask you how you, you uh, enjoyed the meeting. It's a little bit different, but if you want to say a couple of words. I thought it was fantastic. You guys did such a great job. You guys, I could see that new found confidence in every one of you, and I'm very impressed. And definitely something I would like to, you know, learn myself. Thank you so much for sharing right. your experiences with me. It was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesse. Hello, everyone. My name is Jesse. I liked it a lot, and can't wait to join and learn how to speak in front of people. Oh yeah. Great. Thanks. Ladies, oh, um, well, thank you so much, everyone. I really like it. I have fun, and um, I live in the city, so <laughs> okay. it's a long way. So, but thank you. It's nice to see that how, how you improve your speech in front of all of us. Yeah, thank you. Say something. <laughs> I say something. I say something. Thank you. Um, thank you, Kim. Uh, we are here for uh, Kim invited for us. It's the first time I enjoy it, that kind of group. Uh, I enjoy it. Uh, really good. Thank you, humor a lot. Uh, the experiences I enjoy it to hear about. That's really good. Thank you. Okay. Second time come here. I enjoy it. I laughing a lot. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you Anna inviting me this time of Delia. Yeah. Okay. Peter, this is your first time to our club. Sure. What um, what do you like that? I think it's very, very professional like. I also like how there's a it's very, very packed. And I also see that there's not, not a, a lot of, I would like to see, you come to a few more meetings here also to see how you guys do it, like a full meeting to see how it was done here. Mm -hmm. I also look forward to meeting with other people in, in this district also to help them grow, grow the clubs and not only create a, a hope in the future for, for this district and also for a, a future for, for other, other districts also to see how far we can be, get close to some more. But I like to see there's more young people in Toastmasters. Like me, Chase, hopefully our young, younger, young friend, younger friend over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that what, what I did do know from previous experiences is there's not a lot of young people involved in Toastmasters. And Toastmasters has done a lot to help people. We, we, we've all seen it, the general report video. And I would like to see that done with more, more young people. Thanks again for letting us all for kind of to, to your club this evening. And also have a great holiday and a great weekend. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now, just a little bit about our club. We are different than other Toastmasters clubs because we are an advanced club and we evaluate everyone that speaks gets an evaluation. We actually give you two evaluations so that you improve a lot quicker. And it's more like coaching. We really give you some ideas on what you can do to change your speech to make it more effective. And that's what our goal is, is to make sure that you're getting what you came here for. You're getting the experience to speak and you're getting the training, actual training and coaching to develop your speaking skills. And that's why we're different. 
Uh, so do come to one of our next meetings, the, the December 28th, January. December 18th. December 18th. <laughs> I keep giving the wrong dates. De uh, December 18th and January 7th. 8th. 8th. <laughs> <laughs> you know the dates. <laughs> yes. So, Monica, you want to tell the rest of us? <laughs> uh, we do like to have fun, and we do work. At, at our yes, uh, to get the experience we need. Yes, Kim. So um, I, I'm not sure exactly when this happens. I just wanted to make sure since we have so many guests in the room, our meeting room will change next year. And the I, second meeting. Second meeting. Second meeting in January. In January. Yeah. Okay. And it'll be what's the room number? Y106. Y106. So which is actually just like. Next building up, up, up yeah. 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 Come in the door, turn left. Yeah, come in the door, turn left. Same building. Closer okay. to the parking lot. So, but you can always check our website and see what the room number is. All right. Um, from our our little family to your family, we wish you a happy holiday, and we hope to see you very soon. Use the gamble to gamble us out. We don't have the gamble up.